My name is Chloe Fuyu, and I'm from the University of Uvascula, Finland. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about size dependent aggression towards kin. Before we get into that story, though, first I want to set up a hypothetical situation. So you are now a player in a dystopian future. Between you and survival stands two people. The first being your little sister, to whom you are obviously closely related, but who is also pretty easy to kill. The second person in your way is this big unrelated guy, you've never met him before, but he's gonna put up quite a fight. So the question then becomes, who do you attack first? There are obvious, but also not so obvious, costs associated with either decision. More directly, how are these costs shaping your aggression-based decision? Because if you attack your sister, you risk the potential of reducing your inclusive fitness. If you attack this big, burly, unrelated guy, you have a high possibility of risking fatal injury. So this dystopian future might seem a little bit outlandish, but it's actually the daily reality for diverse frog species in the neotropics. Actually, let's go meet one of them, specifically a species of poison frog, to understand how these battle royale-esque games come to be in the first place. So I'd like to introduce you to Dendrobates tinctorius. These guys will lay their eggs terrestrially, and then from these terrestrial egg clutches, dads will actually transport recently hatched tadpoles to small pools of water. This intensive parental care is pretty rare in frogs, so it's really interesting to know where dads are depositing their children. When we take a little bit of a closer look at where these dads are depositing their children, we see that these small pools of water are actually really cool because they're excluding large predators like fish or turtles who might otherwise eat all of the eggs or young tadpoles that have recently hatched. But of course, these small pools aren't paradise. Uh, they're actually quite dangerous because since they're so small, they're prone to drying out. And also since they're so small, there's not a ton of food. So these small pools of water are actually our arena for our dystopian starvation games. And our case here is actually a little bit different because there's an additional behavior between our players. And it's that they're aggressive cannibals. And so in addition to killing each other, they will then consume each other, which is an unexpected benefit that is rarely taken into consideration in most starvation-based dystopias. Thus, the question then becomes, what is shaping aggression in cannibals? How do things like kinship or size mismatch between pairs shape these aggressive decisions? Let's look at each of these variables independently to kind of formulate some hypotheses about the system. If we first look at size differences, if size isn't factor into a decision, as in everyone is equally likely to be attacked, we would assume a flat line. Uh, if we use game theory to kind of inform the behavior uh, with different size differences, we might expect that for really similar sized pairs, that there would be a lot of aggression because within that pair, we have to decide who's gonna be the alpha, who's gonna survive. This is of course in comparison to more differently sized pairs where we would expect that this large tadpole with its body size indicates that it's not even worth it for the small tadpole to risk fighting and fatal injury. When we're looking at kinship, we would expect that if these tadpoles can't discriminate and don't know who's who, there's gonna be equal aggression amongst everyone. Again, uh, if we use game theory to inform our hypotheses, we might expect that siblings are going to be less aggressive towards each other because you would want your brother or sister to survive and pass on copies of the similar genes you guys have in common. This again is in comparison to non-siblings where we would expect more aggression because you're not related to the other tadpole, so you're gonna fight them. Thus, in the question of what's shaping aggression in these cannibals, we have this possibility of kin discrimination, we have the weight of size differences between pairs, and also a possible interaction between these two components. So let me now show you our experimental setup. This consisted of pairs of tadpoles that I placed together and I observed for an hour. I observed behaviors like swimming and resting and also more aggressive behaviors like biting and chasing. And I repeated this 
15 times for each treatment and I used non-siblings, half-siblings and full-siblings as treatments. So uh, let's jump in a little bit to our results. The first result I have is about activity. And when looking at these box plots, you can quickly see that the pink box plots, uh, which indicate the large tadpoles, are higher than these blue box plots. So we're seeing that these large tadpoles are significantly more active than small tadpoles. And this makes sense because the large tadpoles are kind of hunting the smaller ones. The small tadpoles are also sometimes freezing in the corner to perhaps detect the perhaps decrease the possibility of detection by the larger one. Then let me take you to our aggression findings. So already we're gonna see a little bit of drama happening here. So this graph is in faceted uh, by relatedness. And I'd like to draw your attention first to the pink regression line in the first panel and compare it to the pink regression line in the third panel. So that's the average aggression by the large tadpole. And you can see that large non-siblings exhibit almost twice the amount of aggressive behaviors than large siblings towards their smaller counterpart. So we're seeing here that these large non-siblings are significantly more aggressive than large siblings. This interaction makes things really interesting but a little bit more complicated to attack and understand this interactive component between size and relatedness. We actually then again turn to game theory models to visualize uh, and calculate the cost of aggression. So again, here we're using several pretty accepted uh, biological hypotheses to shape our mathematical structure of the model assumptions. And I'd like to take you through those models now. So first we have the confident giant model. So here again, the cost of aggression is size independent. And essentially large tadpoles are less aggressive because being large means you'll probably win. So you really can't be bothered to fight. In other words, size dominance allows the large tadpole to skip the energetic payout of fighting. This is again, actually why we're seeing the small tadpole having huge amounts of aggressive behavior, because since the cost of aggression is size independent, that small tadpole is just going to fight with all of its might to survive versus the large tadpole that just can't be bothered. All right, so the next model we have is the abdication model. Again, here the cost of aggression is size independent and essentially the large tadpole is gonna be closer to metamorphosis. So it's larger size implies it's, it's going to be able to survive and make babies. So again, the size dominance indicates that that large tadpole is more likely to have a higher reproductive success than the small tadpole. For half siblings and full siblings, once the size difference between pairs is large enough, this small uh, tadpole abdicates the throne of fertility and accepts that it's best for them to sacrifice themselves for their big fertile brother or sister. This is in comparison to non-siblings, where we see that the small tadpole never abdicates the throne because they're not related. And so it's not worth it for that small tadpole to ever give up fighting. Our next model is the Conor McGregor model. And so this, uh, in this version, aggression is cheap for big tadpoles and costly for small tadpoles. And so uh, this is actually the model that we saw was closest to our empirical data. So in general, large tadpoles are more aggressive, but this aggression decreases with increased relatedness and that this was really the best fit for what we saw with our lab trials. So this is actually really interesting because we're able to confirm with both empirical and theoretical standpoints that one of the reasons we're seeing this behavior in large tadpoles is because aggression for large tadpoles must not be very costly. Next, we have a final piece of information that I think is still a really interesting part of the story, and that's latency to aggression. This figure is a lot to dissect, so I'm first going to take you through the geography of it. Uh, so looking at the x-axis, we have the difference in size between the pairs. So on the left, pairs are more similarly sized, versus on the right, there is a larger size difference. On the y-axis, which is the latency to aggression, we see that the lower this these points are the faster this aggressive behavior is happening versus the higher we move on the y-axis, the slower it's taking to happen. So the, the later it's happening in the experiment. So let's look a little bit at these data. Uh, we see that in the first panel, which are non-siblings, when the pairs are similarly sized, there's a quite 
fast initial aggressive reaction. This seems to pitter out a little bit <clears throat> as we see increased size differences between pairs. What's really interesting is that this completely inverts for half siblings and full siblings. So when we look at similarly sized pairs, we see that the latency to aggression is very slow. So between similarly sized siblings, they're not attacking each other till you know, 40, 50 minutes into this hour long trial. And this is versus pairs where we see a large size difference where we're seeing aggression between large siblings towards their smaller siblings happening within five minutes. So why is there an inversion in latency to attack between siblings and non-siblings and size differences within each pair? I am not entirely sure right now. It's something I, I really hope to find out later in my thesis. But what we can say is that latency to aggression is dynamic. And there's something going on here with tadpoles assessing each other, which is shaping this initial aggressive behavior. So together, um, my big take home message here is that we found uh, a relatedness by size interaction in our cannibalistic tadpoles. And so is there an opponent assessment going on between these tadpoles? Are these tadpoles assessing each other? Absolutely. Uh, we see different levels of activity and different levels of aggression between different sized pairs. Is there kin discrimination? in this species? Yes, I think so, based on the shift in total aggression and also the latency to aggression between various pairs. The next steps for me is establishing possible kin recognition within the species. I plan to do this by ablating the olfactory region. So we would see that when they can't smell each other, that the ability to distinguish kin would go away. And this is based on different olfactory recognition mechanisms in other animals, such as salamanders and xenopus tadpoles. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you're interested in reading about our work, we have a preprint up. Also, thank you so much to MSEB for hosting and to my collaborators and friends for supporting me.